Bonjour and welcome on the Gospel Spice podcast, where you are invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. Gospel Spice is your Christ-centered podcast, infused with in-depth biblical flavors and sprinkled with a dash of French culture to spice up your relationship with God. Here is your host, Stéphanie Roussel. Before we get started today, I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that we are in our brand new series, Jesus, Rabbi, and Lord. And I simply could not be more thrilled to do this series with you. We have amazing workbooks for each and every single episode. We have a summary, a listening guide, some key takeaways, the key quotes, some Bible verses to go with it, up to 10 questions per episode to allow you to use in your quiet time to go deeper. And then even topics for further research in case something really just tickles your interest. So these workbooks are honestly a complete steal. They're super cheap. They're absolutely gorgeous. You really want them to enhance your experience of our series, Jesus, Rabbi, and Lord. Go to gospelspice.com slash Jesus in order to purchase them. And now our episode. Here at Gospel Spice, we are inviting you to encounter Jesus in this culturally relevant way. And we're going to be doing that by revealing the Gospels from the inside out, looking at a big picture context to understand what the Bible says about our purpose here on earth. And then we're going to be diving into the text. And our goal is going to be to find gems. Sometimes we might be, you know, raking for leaves on the surface of the Garden of Scripture. But most of the time, I am going to challenge you to get your hands dirty and to dig deep. The goal is going to be to unearth raw diamonds. And they're going to need a little bit of cleaning up. And then they're going to shine. So here's an outline of what we're going to be doing here at Gospel Spice over the course of the next few weeks and the next few months. We're going to be digging into scripture and our goal is going to be seeking and finding the glory of God. And specifically, I want us to be looking at ways that might not be really obvious to our 21st century Western Gentile culture and mindset. All right. I want to keep at all times in the forefront of our minds that we're entering a different culture. So the best way to do that is going to be to dive into the most Jewish and the least Western of the four Gospels. And that happens to be the Gospel of Matthew. Remember, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four authors. And Matthew is the one who is also writing to the most Jewish audience initially. He treats his topic in the most Jewish manner. And because he's addressing his buddies who come from the same upbringing in the same neighborhood and the same culture, he doesn't really describe to them their common culture because he takes it all for granted. So it's lost to us. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be following from Matthew, but looking all over scripture. One of my greatest passions is to link the Old Testament and the New Testament together. And specifically, I love few things more than finding Jesus in the Old Testament, how he's referenced, how he's predicted and inferred and presented, and how the entire Old Testament really, uh, which was written over a period of over a thousand years, and that closed over 400 years before Jesus came, the entire Old Testament points to Jesus. Matthew makes that clearer than probably any other gospel authors, probably just as clear as Paul. The only book that is more clear even is the Epistles to the Hebrews. That is even more maybe a proof of the Christocentricity of the Old Testament, the fact that the Old Testament is really centered around Christ. So Matthew then is going to be our guide. I am particularly passionate about this topic right now. And it might be that just last summer I came back from Israel and my first visit there. And it really allowed me to experience scripture really with like fresh new flavors ever since I've been back. And I kind of want to invite you alongside that. So there's two resources I want to point out very briefly before we dig into our first episode in Matthew. The first is the Matthew workbook that's available on our website gospelspice.com and you can purchase it and it allows you to have uh, really everything you need for each episode there's listening guides episode summaries there's uh, 8 to 12 questions with each episode to allow you to go deeper we have some key takeaways we have some topics to research further if you want to and that comes with every single episode so I highly recommend it and it's really a steal it's a high quality workbook can't recommend it enough so go to gospelspice.com to figure that out and to to purchase that workbook if you're interested. The other thing is 
I created an online Bible study in the footsteps of Jesus. That's really my invitation to you to join us on a virtual tour to Israel, kind of through my eyes, uh, what it's like to experience Jerusalem and Galilee in the footsteps of Jesus, kind of through my perspective. So we're teaching this as an online Bible study in the fall of 2023. But if you're listening to this episode way later than that, then we're working to create a webinar where you can access all of those lessons in the footsteps of Jesus in a Bible study package that's going to have everything you need to do it, including a workbook similar to the one to Matthew I just described. So depending on when you're listening, the footsteps Bible study might be available to you and go check out our website because it's a great way to dive deeper into the culture of Israel in the days of Jesus. And then finally, last thing I wanted to tell you briefly is that this study on the Gospel of Matthew, I initially taught um, a different version of it on the podcast about four years ago. And so it's very interesting that we're coming back full circle with another deep dive into Matthew from a first century Jewish perspective. So that's it. That's kind of what I wanted to tell you. And now we are into the book of Matthew. In order to do that, I suggest that we start by looking at the context of where we live. Think about the world that you woke up to this morning. What have you had to do today or this week as you've encountered so many different cultures and languages and faith and backgrounds? You've done that at work. You've done that at home. You've done that online and offline. You've done that at school. You've done that even at the grocery store or at church. All of those global cross-cultural interactions have become our daily reality. There's no denying that. And so what that has done, I think, to our generation is that it's given birth to this awareness of the otherness of Jesus's culture as we dig into the pages of scripture. And I think it's given us a desire to understand the culture of scripture in a new way. Think about the generation that you and I represent, or maybe the generation that we are seeing being raised up. By and large, we pretty instinctively navigate this very global cross-cultural world. And we do this online and offline. We do it day in and day out and without even thinking about it. So Gospel Spice invites anyone who is aware of the global culture that we live in, whether you're a Christian or not, but probably more likely if you're a Christian, we invite you to come alongside Jesus' initial audience, the ones that he initially spoke to and to sit alongside them on the grass, in the fields, in the mountains, to walk alongside Jesus, to experience the fresh spiritual favors that the Messianic Jewish culture weaves into the four Gospels without really naming it, because they were breathing it in and out. Because you see, there's a problem in all of this. Tim Keller said, and I'm quoting here, that a lack of cultural awareness is going to lead to distorted Christian living. He's saying, that if we're not aware of the culture around us, we're going to have a distorted Christian life. And he did raise up a whole lot of comments and people were genuinely confused. And the gist of their question, I think, could be summed up, you know, by the question of one of them, which was, what does cultural awareness have to do with Christian living? And the answer is, my friends, everything. Because think back of the four authors of the four Gospels. There's four men, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these four men wrote each of the four canonical Gospels that we have today. And when they did that 2,000 years ago, they had no idea that there would be over 2,000 years of a primarily Gentile church that would be following in their footsteps. So, for example, it doesn't matter how creative or imaginative they might have been, there was no way they could ever have imagined, I don't know, Instagram or Google Cars or, you know, a podcast they would have no idea how to navigate the world that we live in and that we live in very effortlessly. But what we forget is that they were navigating a very different world. And it might be just as hard for us to navigate their world as it would be for them to navigate ours today. You see, there's a whole lot of nuances of their culture that they don't explain to us in their gospels. They never penned the nuances of the culture because they were speaking into it. Just like I never have, I didn't have to explain to you what Starbucks is or a Google car or Instagram because you know. You see, communication never happens in a vacuum. Even Jesus, who is by all standards the ultimate communicator, even Jesus spoke into his culture. 
and he always folded the flavors, the spices of his audience's culture into the teachings that we are now called to enjoy in our generation. But we've lost the nuances and we don't know how to describe those spices and oftentimes we can't even name them. I was just watching a show recently, a cooking show, and one of the judges could not name the spices that one of the contestants had been using and he had to ask, what are the spices you're using there? He liked the mix, but he couldn't name them, and therefore he would never have been able to truly understand the essence of the dish or to replicate it, even though he was a chef. He was the judge. And it's the same here. We've lost not only the ability to name the spices that flavor the gospel, spiritually speaking, but also even our ability to taste them and to identify them. So that's what we're going to be doing here at Gospel Spice. It's basically a, a guided tour, no more and no less. A guided tour of scripture to experience the New Testament through this Jewish cultural framework. But we're going to be doing that, and I promise you, by retaining very conservative Orthodox Christian doctrine. We're going to be making this first century Jewish culture accessible to our modern 21st century Gentile Western ears and culture. And we're going to be doing that by translating pretty simple scholarly research into you know, the daily stuff. I believe that Jesus weaves his spirit into our stories in powerful ways, as well as your story. How is Jesus weaving his spirit into your story today? As for me, obviously, as you can hear, I'm French. I was born and raised in France as an atheist, and I came to the U.S. as a foreign exchange student when I was 16. I did my senior year of high school here in the States, and I graduated here from a high school in Pennsylvania. The most important piece, however, is that during my year of the, in the States, uh, coming from an atheist background, this is the year where I discovered the claims of Jesus on my life. And the bottom line is that I found him to be absolutely irresistible. So I gave my life to him. I was very much afraid, but I knew this was the right thing to do. And I couldn't wait to see what the Lord was going to do with this life that I was giving him. And that was, oh gosh, like over 30 years ago. And since then, I've gone back to France, um, met this handsome young man in college. We got married and I've worked in business most of my life. In a nutshell, the way I like to think of how God wove my life is that I've spent the last two decades on my, of my life on three continents and four countries, and five cities. I didn't plan for that, but that is how the Lord ordained it, and this experience has allowed me, as a privilege, and sometimes, to be quite honest, forced me, because sometimes it's painful, to decipher the local culture. And that is because I always wanted, when I was getting into a new setting, a new country, a new continent, I wanted to be able to relate to my surroundings and my neighbors. I wanted to be able to relate to their faith, their backgrounds, their experiences, their cultures, their languages. And so after over 20 years of doing that, I feel like the Lord has given me this unique perspective to introduce the Jewish flavors of the Gospels to a non-Jewish, non-scholarly audience just like me. I am a non-Jewish, non-scholarly person approaching yet another culture. And this time it's not flesh and blood, but it's on the pages of scripture. And we're going to do that together. What I am is simply a tour guide for Christians and for active seekers who are seeking to understand Jesus and who understand that we are surrounded by a multitude of worldviews like never before in the history of mankind. I'm interested in walking alongside believers who seek to deepen their faith amidst our global, multifaceted, and multicultural world. So with Gospel Spice, you and I are going to be relating to Jesus' first century Holy Land audience. We're going to be sitting on the grass, we're going to be walking down the streams and up the hills with Jesus' audience. And if you're anything like me, you are probably, you know, a Gentile, which means you're a non-Jew believer in Jesus. Or maybe you're a seeker and you're trying to understand who Jesus is. And the one thing that might differentiate you and me is that since I am speaking into the American culture, you are probably American, but I'm not. So I'm an outsider to the American culture that I am speaking into, which means that I understand what it's like to approach a new culture from the outside. I've done that several times on several continents now. I've lived as a foreigner uh, most of my adult life. I left France when I was 16 first and then again when I was 24, 25. So I've really lived most of my life outside of my home culture. As a result of that, I'm honored to 
just to come alongside you and to hold your hand and as we travel together to experience and taste this this foreign culture of the Gospels firsthand. So now, I've mentioned that I was an atheist. That matters because the one thing God gave me and that I really often consider to be my saving grace is this intellectual curiosity which was key in my coming to faith because I enjoy digging into knowledge and I'm open to change as a result. This intellectual honesty of if I discover something that I can't deny, something that is obviously true, then it is going to affect me and change me. I can't really bury my head in the sand. And that happened when I discovered the claims of Jesus on my life. I couldn't bury my head in the sand and ignore that Jesus, who was just a man, if you wish, had risen from the dead because that is something only God can do. And that really shook my entire world and, and led me to faith because Jesus was no longer just a man in my eyes. He was who he claimed to be, which is, you know, Jesus is fully God and fully man. So I like to think that I'm teachable as a result of this intellectual curiosity that I am willing to act on. And so the reason why I think that teachability is a good thing is because I want to sit at the feet of God as the ultimate teacher. To me, there's nothing like listening to him through Bible study or through prayer or through time in fellowship with other believers or, you know, when we're sharing his truth with people of other faith and other cultures. So that's what I mean by this teachability. Not to mention, you know, the French aspect of it. You can hear that I have a French accent. I've been trying to get rid of it for so long and I can't. Another thing I've been trying to get rid of is so many of my, you know, foibles and inadequacies. I, I don't mind laughing at my own failures because there's just so many of them I've learned to have a sense of humor about it. And so um, that's one thing I'm grateful for is that I don't take myself very seriously. And you're going to see that over the, the next few podcasts. So so much for your host. I am anything but a scholarly proper person. I'm someone who is very much aware of her own failures and shortcomings and inadequacies and very much relying on God's grace to carry me through it all. I don't have it all figured out by any means, but Jesus does. And so, you know, let's walk together with him and see what he has in store for us over Gospel Spice. One thing that has helped me understand the value of walking alongside someone else is the many mentors that I've had, and I still do, who have remodeled for me what it's like to fully surrender to Jesus, to honestly like cast all of my life on him. And what I've discovered over the last three decades of walking with him is that God truly is the delight of my heart, as he promises to be when we ask him. So together, let's seek to cultivate and grow our passion and our worship for him. You know, I'm not going to say this lightly, but honestly, I would say my greatest privilege probably is to walk alongside another believer just like me, to walk a step or two together in this Christian life and see what the Lord has, and to reach out to anyone who might be interested in diving deeper into scripture with God. The goal is, you know, the delight of his glory. That's my life in a nutshell. That's my motto. That's my ambition is um, to delight in the glory of God. All right. So what is going to happen now? We are wrapping up our first episode here and we're going to be spending many more episodes together. Invite all your friends to join us. We're going to be digging to the four gospels and all of scripture really to discover all of the flavors that are there. I want us to embrace Jesus' description of us as the salt of the earth. That's in Matthew. My paraphrase of that is that I want us to be the spice of the gospel. As we drink more deeply from the fountain of scripture, it's going to transform us. And I suspect it's going to make us want to share with those that we love. Speaking of those that we love, I am still the only believer in my family of origin. It counts atheists and agnostics and, and other faith. And I'm looking at them, wonderful people whom I love dearly. And I am convinced that the reason why people don't embrace Jesus is not because they don't agree with what scripture teaches though some do, but the vast majority, I would say, it's largely because they just don't understand what the Bible teaches. They really just don't understand who Jesus is. No one's ever described to them Jesus' claims and who he is. That is life-changing. My story is that I have found Jesus to be compelling and attractive and irresistible, but you have to taste it to know it. Okay, let me compare that to chocolate. You're going to hear me comparing a whole lot of things to chocolate because I love really dark chocolate. Now, let's say you've never tasted chocolate before. I can describe the flavor and the texture to you until I'm blue in the face, but there's going to come a point where you're going to have to take a bite. And the moment you do that, 
I suspect that you're going to go from an intellectual agreement about the flavors and texture of chocolate to a flavor explosion where you're going to be wanting more. And that's what I want with scripture. Let's stop describing things and let's start biting, taking a bite out, exploding with flavors. It's no coincidence that there's a verse that says that let's taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That is the spices of the gospel, the good news of who God is and what he has done for us. That is the gospel, who God is and what he has done for us. That's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be digging deep into who we are as well, because it's part of the story. And we're going to be looking at why he created us and who he calls us to be. These are all gospel spices that we're going to be tasting and enjoying and chewing on and sharing with the world. I think we're going to be enjoying the ride of discovering the taste of the gospels. And the more we're going to be tasting those gospel spices, the more we're going to be delighting in the glory of God. Now, the glory of God is a big topic. By that, I mean the intimacy of his presence, the beauty of his face. We're going to be experiencing the presence of God by faith as we see his face in scripture and in our own experience of it. There's a verse that inspires me deeply. It's Paul who wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, that God has given us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. In the face of Christ Jesus, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. And there's another verse just before that where he says that the light of the gospel is the glory of Christ. The glory of Christ is the light of the gospel. In other words, If you put those two verses together, what I'm hearing is that the spices of the gospel reveal the face of God in Christ Jesus by faith. So if you read the gospels with the proper spices back in, and you're able to experience those spices, then it's going to reveal the face of God in Christ Jesus by faith to you. That's what Paul is saying, and that's what we're after. So as we are wrapping up this first episode here, I want to invite you according to the Westminster Catechism, to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. That is the goal of life. That is why God created us. The thing is, none of us has arrived. We all long to worship Him more, to dig into our understanding of Him more, to have more intimacy with Him, to make His presence more real in our life day in and day out. I want to know Him more. That is what Gospel Spice is all about. It's about knowing God more. And I I really just don't mean the intellectual knowledge, you know, the the head knowledge. You know, that's the going deeper, the heart knowledge. Jonathan Edwards calls it the spiritual mind. It's this mind that has been transformed by the truth of the gospel, that has been seeping in the spices of the gospel. So as I wrap up, let me quote to you my favorite verse that is going to be our guide. It's Philippians 3.10, and I'm going to be reading it in the Amplified. If you're able, if you're not driving, close your eyes and just listen to Paul's word as inspired by the Holy Spirit. For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly and that I may, in the same way, come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection which it exerts over believers, that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in the Spirit into his likeness, even to his death. That, my friends, is the purpose and the scope of Gospel Spice, and I welcome you to the adventure. Hi, Jonah here. Thank you for being part of the Gospel Spice family. If you've enjoyed this episode, you will love receiving our newsletter. It contains value-packed free gifts and rich content each month. It's at gospelspice.com slash sign up. There is always something new and exciting happening around here, and I don't want you to miss out. Sign up at gospelspice.com slash sign up. Did you know Gospel Spice has a YouTube channel? There's exclusive content there too. So join Gospel Spice on YouTube. Also, please give us a star rating and a comment on your podcast listening app. 
Your reviews actually really do make a difference to help others discover and experience Gospel Spice. As always, we are praying for you. You can confidentially email us your prayer requests and praise items at the email address contact at gospelspice.com. It's our privilege to pray for you. So, I'll leave you with four things to do. Please pick one and do it at your convenience. One, sign up on our website for our newsletter to receive gifts you're going to love. Two, find us on YouTube and see what content we've put together to help you grow closer to Jesus. Three, rate Gospel Spice on your listening app. It's one of the easiest ways to share the gospel. And finally, four, tell us how we can pray for you. Merci. Merci.